The national debt in the United States topped $30 trillion last week. As spending continues to soar, we asked if this is something the average American needs to worry about. And how do we get out from underneath this mountain of debt? Christian Garzon talked to local economic experts to find out should the U.S. government stop borrowing large amounts of money. The United States has a debt of $30 trillion. What are the consequences? On the 1st of February 2022, our officials at the U.S. Treasury Department were checking their ledgers. Something wasn't right. As they scrolled through endless expenses, they realized that they were in debt, and a debt of $30 trillion. Well, so we put our thinking caps on. This is concerning, and we wanted to know, what could this mean? Where would this go, and why did this happen? Well, the why is the most important question, as we can stop this and help the government serve us better. So let's dive into this topic, and this is the United States has a debt of $30 trillion. What are the consequences? But before I begin, I would like to urge you all to watch this until the end to see if we provided valuable input to you, and then consider subscribing. There is a clock that sits in the middle of 1 Bryant Park on West 43rd Street and 151 West, 42nd Street on 6th Avenue in the city of New York. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it has been gaining day by day, and it's not a good sign. It tells us about the national debt that has been accumulating over the years. Now, about three-fourths of it is public debt, which means that the government owed by individuals, businesses, and foreign governments that bought treasury bills, notes, and bonds. And the remaining the government owes to itself, like social security and other trust funds. This is called the intra-governmental holdings. This means that the federal government is counting on you to pay the debt back one day, as most of the federal revenue comes from individual taxes. If it bothers people, then it is working. This is what Seymour Durst said after he installed the debt clock in the year 1983. Those days, the clock indicated a debt of $3 trillion. What made it to reach $30 trillion? Well, here's why. There were a lot of things that happened to make the numbers rise. 1990 was a good start as it was a time when the economy was growing. Steady jobs were created, inflation was low, and productivity was rising. This made 2000 look good. The debt clock was no longer climbing, and everything was working out. The federal government could generate enough revenue to reduce the deficit and debt. But this was short-lived, as there was an eight-month economic downturn that started in March and lasted through November. This was the 2001 recession. And do not forget the 9-11 terrorist attack. The damage had been done, which subsequently lowered the revenue and the rebuilding of the tower meant more government spending. That would be added to the debt. Then there was also the Great Depression and the COVID-19 crisis. The national debt was at 20 trillion in the year 2017. And by the end of the year 2021, it spiked to 29 trillion. Now on the 1st of February, the national debt is $30 trillion. Events that contributed. With a debt to GDP ratio of 108%, I began to investigate the factors that might have contributed. And here's what I found. President Franklin D. Roosevelt added $236.1 billion to the debt between the course of 1933 and 1945. That was a massive spike, estimated at 1,048%. Considering the times, it is justified as we spent it all to aid the Great Depression of 1929 that lasted till 1939, and to prepare the U.S. Army for the Second World War during the 1940s. Then there is President Barack Obama, with the highest deficit adding $8.3 trillion to the debt and that is a 70% increase in the national debt, which was mainly utilized to aid the 2008 financial crisis through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act stimulus package. He also reduced the taxes and increased military spending. President Donald Trump added $7.8 trillion to the debt during his time at the office, and this was even before the pandemic. The national debt increased by 39%. This includes the fiscal year budget and COVID-19 pandemic recovery. President Joe Biden's agenda is set to add a debt of $9 trillion by 2031. But as of 1st February 2022, President Biden has added $2.26 trillion to the national debt. The Social Security Trust Fund is managed by the U.S. Treasury and funded by payroll taxes. They provide benefits to the retired workers and family members of deceased beneficiaries. But the funds were loaned to the government to finance the increased spending which would also be added to the national debt as it had to be repaid as individuals retire. Foreign investors are more than happy to lend money to America as they are the largest customer. Countries like China and Japan buy treasuries to invest in their export proceedings that are dominated by the US dollar. These purchases of treasury bills have a low interest rate based on the trust that the US economy has the power to pay them back. Consequences In the short term, the government's spending will exceed its revenue. This is what they call a budget deficit. It increases the economic growth 
and they acquire various medical supplies, defense equipment, and buildings which will in turn increase the higher rate. And as they spend their salary on daily essentials, the consumer spending will increase, hence boosting the economy. The United States seems to be able to afford deficit spending at the moment, as there is a low interest rate on their debt. But in the long run, as the debt to GDP ratio increases, it will urge the investors to demand a large interest, as it would signify that the country might have issues paying them back. Now, the treasury is in high demand, and it is one of the factors why the interest is not so high. When the demand for these treasuries are weakened, the interest demand could rise. The value of the treasury security is strapped together with the value of the dollar. And this means that if the value of the treasury declines, then the value of the dollar will as well. This will upset the foreign investors, which would lead to a decrease in demand. Well, at this point, the US would have to pay a higher interest. At this rate, the Social Security Trust Fund would soon be deprived of funds to cover the retirement plans promised to the individuals born in 1964. This would decrease the chances of loans from other countries and could increase the taxes. The country might be in danger of not being able to meet its debt obligations. This could mean a debt crisis is around the corner. The national debt is about 130% of its GDP. The US has fragile economic health as of now. The loans were indeed necessary to help the country recover from the crippling effects of the pandemic. This burden seems hefty, but the economy is picking back up, and the investors are still interested in the US Treasury. The interest is low, and this could mean that the country can recover. There is no chance of the US being politically blackmailed by any country, and no foreign country holds more than 5% of the total national debt. However, the country is now facing rapid growth in inflation, and the citizens are upset about the prices that are rising as their local supermarkets and gas stations. This is effective at controlling inflation, but on the other hand, it will increase the cost of managing the public debt. There is a big issue with the rising debt as people are concerned that the next increase in prices would burden the next generation. But history has it and everyone knows that the US was born in debts, and they have survived, and they will this as well. It might be a bit hard in the beginning, but the US has a flexible job market. They have always survived, and I'm sure they will this time as well. Let's begin with US where the Senate has approved raising federal government's debt limit by $2.5 trillion to about $31.4 trillion and sent it to House of Representatives to pass. The 50-49 party line vote follows a months-long standoff between Democrats and Republicans. With a letter seeking to force President Joe Biden's party to raise debt limit on its own.